Hello there, Periscope land. Elaine Strozier here. <clears throat> I really wanted to get this scope out earlier, but can you hear my congestion? I don't catch colds very often, but when I do catch a cold, I catch it. So I've been resting this morning, and so I have jumped up and refreshed a little bit, and so I wanted to get this scope out. Um, hey there, Carmelita. Woo that get this scope out before I have to transition and prepare my family for Bible study. So, um, we're, I want to talk to you about, and if you have your Bible, um, your hard copy or your Bible on your, um, your iPad or whatever. Um, so just get it out and let's look real quick. I just want to talk about child training. I want to talk about parenting. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Elaine Strozier, founder and CEO of A Woman, A Wife, A Mother Ministries, where we teach women, honor wives, and establish joy in mothering because jo uh, mothering should be joyous. Not every day. It's hard. It's diligent work, but um, it shouldn't be like cumbersome all the time. Mm-mm. Let's look at Deuteronomy six four through nine. Now, in the in in the in the Hebrew in Hebrew in the in the Jewish culture, this is called the Shema S H E M A the Shema, and basically it's a pledge of allegiance to parents. So, Deuteronomy six four through nine is called the Shema S H E M A, and it's basically a pledge of allegiance to parents and in the culture in the Hebrew culture they would read the Shema in the morning and in the evening so it was their pledge of allegiance their declaration as a parent to their children powerful thing it says here O Israel and Deuteronomy um, 1 uh, 6 1 through 19 is basically um, Israel being exhorted um, to obey God so verse 4 says here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord. Now that word hear doesn't mean hear as in how you can hear my voice now. It doesn't mean the faculty of the intricate details of your 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 inner ear working. That's not what it means to hear in Hebrew thought. That's that what it means to hear in in Hebrew thought to hear is shama. S H A M A and it means to obey. That's why the Bible says be a hearer and a what? a doer of the word, because when you do the word, it means that you have heard the word. Ah, big difference in Greek mindset, which means I hear you because I have an ear and, and it works. So I'm not deaf. I can hear you. But in Hebrew thought, you are deaf if you hear and you don't obey. So that word here in, uh, um, in Hebrew, um, in the original language is Shema. So in other words, God is saying, obey Israel because I am your Lord. I am God. Then it says, and thou shalt love the Lord. This is a command. Thou shalt love the Lord thy, thy God with all thy heart, underline that, with all thy soul, underline that, and with all thy might. So let's break that down. We're, we're still talking about child training here. So he's telling Israel, Oh, I love it when y'all give me hearts. That lets me know that you're listening. And it's almost like you saying amen. So if you hear the Lord speaking through this um, periscope and, and you are agreeing to the word and you want to say amen, I'll know that you're saying amen when you when you hit those those hearts. OK, and that's encouraging to me. So what he says, love to God says to love them with all thy heart. That word heart is lavav, L-E-B-A-B, -B, but the B is pronounced in a V, so lavav. And listen to this. It means your appetites. It means your emotions. It means your passions. It means your mind and your understanding. So he says, love me with your appetites. Love me with your passions. Love me with your mind. Love me with your understanding and all of your getting, get an understanding. If we don't understand how to carry out the word, then we're not going to do it. it. The word of God is just going to be an idea. It's just going to be a noun. It won't be a verb. It won't be action. So he says, love me with all of your heart, your appetites, your passions, your mind, and your understanding. And with all your nefesh. Nefesh is, um, it means that life has been breathed into you. It means that you are a living creature. So love me with everything that's on the inside of you because you are alive. And then love me with all of your might. And that word might means 
diligence. It is the highest degree of persistent work and effort. To love the Lord with all of your heart means that you are diligent. To love the Lord with all of your heart, hi there. Um, to love the Lord with all of your heart means that you, with, I mean, with all of your might means you're working in the kingdom with the highest degree of diligence. And diligence means persistent work and effort. So that, that takes on a, a heavier weight, doesn't it? Love and thou shalt love the Lord with all of your passions, all of your appetites, your whole mind and your understanding because you are nefesh. You are a breathing, living soul. And as you live for me with everything that's within you, make sure that you do it with all of your might, the highest degree of diligence. And then he says, and these words, which I command you, or these words, which I order you on this day shall be in your lavav. lavav. It should be in your mind. It should be in your understanding. It should be in your heart. So this is what he's telling the, the, uh, the people of Israel. Then he says, catch this, you do what I tell you to do with everything that's in you, with your passions, with your, with your, the breath that I breathe in you. And then he says, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children. Teach what? Everything that he teaches you, teach it to your children. And then he says, teach it to them diligently and thou shalt teach them diligently to teach diligently means to um, instill the truth by persistent instruction so a lot of times in in our in uh, being our cr Christian parent we say well I am teaching them well I do take them to church well we say our prayers at night well we did our devotion and that's great and thumbs up to you and high five to you, fist bump to you, but baby, that is not enough. What do you mean? Well, according to the scripture, that's not enough. And thou shalt teach them diligently to instill by persistent instruction, teach the word of God, keep, teach the commands that I give you, Israel, O oh, Israel, O oh, um, family, the Williams family, the Frost family, the Collard Green family, the Strozier family, the Smith family, teach, teach them diligently unto your children and talk or commune of them, that which I teach you, when you sit in your house. So when you're at home, talk about what I have commanded in the scripture and talk about what I've commanded in the scripture when you walk by the way. Even when you leave the house, talk about it. And when you get ready to go to bed, it says, and when you lie down, talk about it. And when you rise up, talk about it. So how often are we piercing or instilling or diligently teaching our children the word of God? Yes, I see those hearts. That means that you're saying amen. So how often all the time, not just Sunday when you go to church, not just before you go to bed, not just Lord, thank you for this food and what I'm about to see in Jesus name. Amen. No, it's all the time. Oh, well, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. That's exactly right. If we want our children to write, to be raised up, to be godly seed, the, we, we went over yesterday, train up your child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart. It's diligent, persistent work to the highest degree. If we're going to love the Lord, our God, with all of our heart, with all of our passions, do you feel passionate about your children? Do you have a strong appetite that your children um, fall in love with the Lord? Then you have to be diligent. Diligent is not a fly by night, easy going word. No, all, to love the Lord that your God with all your might means that the highest degree of diligent and persistent effort. And it doesn't mean that you're browbeating your child or, you know, beating them over the head with it. No, it doesn't mean that. You can you can create a taste uh, for God in your children's mouth by just the way you give the word. So I want to introduce you to some of the books that I use when my ch when my children were smaller. It is very, very important to ch start training your children as soon as they come out of your womb. It's very important to be start prophesying over them and um, speaking life over them while they're in your womb. It's very important if you don't have children and you desire children to start speaking to 
to that child. God, I thank you for my children that are coming. God, I thank you that you were going to teach me how to raise them up, how to train them up. God, give me women, give me men, give me families that I can be become involved in so that I can watch them. That is walking with other parents, walking with other people who are training their child and doing it right. That is called discipleship. Discipleship is not a, it's not just meet on Thursdays at six o'clock from six to seven to learn doctrine. No, walking in discipleship, according to the Bible means walking closely together, hand in hand with someone. So you older women, snatch up some younger women, allow them to spend the day at your house to see how you carry out this child training thing. Teach them how to clean up their house by inviting them into your house and get them scrubbing the tub with you. That's how you older women um, train and teach the younger women. So anyway, here are some books train our, our children. This is a 365 confessions for kids. So how many days in the year are there? 365. So you can get your little one year old or your little six month old or your little two month old and you can just begin to give them an appetite for the word of God. So here's March 27th and you see how short they are. March 28th. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. So if you have a little baby boy, you pray, God, I thank you and I praise you that you, if it is your will, that you will bless my child with an excellent wife, that that woman will be the crown of my son. And then if you have a little girl, God, I thank you that you will teach me how to teach this little girl to be an excellent wife, that she will be the crown of her husband. I prophesy and I speak and I endeavor to teach Proverbs 12, 4 to my child. And then it says, I'm not too young to claim just the right person to marry. God is already working on my future mate. He's preparing someone wonderful to share my life with me. A joyful person who loves Jesus is on the way. We will have a long marriage and family, a loving marriage and family. God will be the center of our home. Thank you, Jesus, for preparing us to be together. And that's a devotion. That can be a scripture memory verse. So we 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 use that. Oops. We use this was one of my all-time favorites right here. Susan Hunt. This was one of my all-time favorite books right here. So this is A to Z. This is how I learned scripture memory as well. Um, a, a soft answer turns away wrath. And then it gives you a story about these two of this brother and this sister. So it makes the story come alive. And then it's got a let's talk portion and a let's pray portion. So um, you can read this um, A for a week. A soft answer turns away wrath. Proverbs 15, 1. You can read this one Bible story to your children for an entire week until they hide this in their heart, until you see them speaking in a way to their siblings that is a soft answer that it'll turn away wrath and then it goes from b a to z blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god and when you're working on this scripture verse then how often are you talking about it you're talking about it all day long when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lay down and when you rise up this is another one here's what we do as parents a lot of times we want to train our children and we want to correct them when they are in the when they are in sin but i we use these books in our house they're very these these are very old books um but they're pretty they're in pretty good shape they probably they just need wiping down a little bit but anyway this is a children's book of tattling by joy berry so and she's got a bunch of them look at look at all these character let's see if it'll focus mm, there we go we have all these books and we read all these books to our children, not because they were being lazy, but because so that we can prevent laziness. Don't wait to read about cheating when they're cheating, because then they're, you're, they, you can harden their heart. What's her name again? Joy Berry. You can harden your children's heart when you start admonishing them about selfishness when they're being selfish. You can harden their heart because they're already selfish. They're getting in trouble and and that and 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 that can just it can just cause them to be offended. So start reading these books to them, these character training books before they start acting before they start tattling. Let's learn about tattling. Do you know what tattling is about? Very easy read. This book This book is about Tammy and her brother TJ. Reading about Tammy and TJ can help you with understand with dealing with tattling. Then it shows you these pictures and it's very multicultural, which I love. It says, 
he says, uh, and she says, I'm telling mom. And so when you're, when you're talking to your children, you ask them, why do you think that Tammy is going to tell on her brother DJ? Well, because he spilled the milk and then you can go on. Well, do you think the milk was hot or do you think it was warm? Do you think that it was almond milk or rice milk or cow's milk? And then, so this is teaching them, oh, we don't drink cow's milk, do we? No, because cow's milk is for calves and we're not calves, are we? No, we give our babies breast milk. And then when our babies get older, we give them almond milk or rice milk. And we like to put coconut milk in our oatmeal, don't we? Yes, we do. And see, you're communing with your child, you're talking with with them while you're sitting in your house and so this is another book that we we use and we loved and then as they got older um, and we already created that appetite for our children um, this is one of our school books as many of you know I homeschool so we we, we read um, uh, this this is one of their curriculums the Kings of Israel and this was a fantastic book and this is of course when they get older and if you've already created if you've already created an appetite in your child's um, mouth for the word of God, this they're going to be hungry and thirsty for this right here. So that is it from me. Let me turn. That is it from me. So here, O Israel, the Lord... Our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your passions, all of your emotions, your mind, and, and your understanding, with all of your nefesh, because I breathe in you, and with all of your might. Love me with all of your might, the, which is the highest degree of diligence. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, shall be in your passions, in your emotions. And whatever I teach you, then you must, he, he, he says, and thou shalt. Out, which means you must teach them diligently to your children and you shall talk about what I teach you all day long every day all the time when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign oh we didn't finish the scripture and thou shalt bind them for a sign verse 8 upon thy hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes if you look up the word frontlets, um, if you study that word in in Hebrew in the Old Testament, frontlets was it's called a it's called a teflon. T e f f i l l i n a teflon, and it was this box that they put around their head and they strapped it around their head, and that was the teflon. So when God says uh, bind them for a sign upon your hand, bind them, them are the commandments, the Shema, um, around, around thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. They put this box here, and on parchment paper, they would have a, um, a scribe, um, a skilled scribe would write the Shema on the laws on the on this parchment paper and they would put it in the in the Tephilim and they would put it there on their heads. Well, if you read Matthew 23, 1 through 6, the Lord speaks to the Pharisees for doing this because they've got all this religious stuff going on and they were far from the truth. So what does that mean for us today? How do we bind the word of God um, like Tephilim between our eyes? It means Get the word of God inside of your noose. Get it inside of your mind. Get it inside of your heart and your mind. In Hebrew thought, the heart and the mind is the same. And it says, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you go and you visit a lot of Jewish homes, you will see a mezuzah, a M-E-Z-U-Z, -Z, I think it's A-H. You will see a mezuzah on their doorposts, on their bedroom posts, on their living room posts. You won't see one on the bathroom or the closets because those rooms are too small. But you will see this mezuzah and inside of the mezuzah is the Shema or these laws. And the laws are written on parchment paper by a, a professional scribe and they're put inside of the Teflon and they're put inside of the mezuzah and they're put on the doorposts of their house. So what does that look like for us today? It looks like putting scripture on your wall. Let the scripture be everywhere and memorize it and study it and hide it in your heart so that you don't sin against God.
So the word of God is everywhere, all day, every day, when we rise up, when we lay down, when we're at home, when we go by the way, it's you can put the word of God on when your children are sleeping. I would put Bible songs on for them to listen to while they sleep. I would put Bible stories on for them to listen to while they are asleep. We would get into the car and I would put on, um, I would get those Bible stories and, oh gosh, there was... I can't remember, but I used to go to the library and get the um, Odyssey, Odyssey. I'd put Odyssey on. I would rent, um, check, check Odyssey out at the at the library and put it in the in the van. And we'd listen to the Odyssey stories. I wanted the word of God in their heart all the time, every day, all day, so that they will not depart from the truth. It is diligence. The word of God should be everywhere all day, every day, period. That's it. But you give it to them in such a way that they're hungry and they're thirsty for it. When you, If you try to train your children when they're 13 and 14, they're like, Psh, you weren't living holy these 13 years I've been alive. Don't be trying to put your religion on me. You've got to approach them in a different way. Well, how do you approach them? You repent. You tell them, I did not do what God told me to do because I did not know how to do it. And I did not train you up. And I did not, and I didn't, I did not prepare you for success. <clears throat> in the things of God. And for that, I am a sinner. And I've asked God to forgive me and to cleanse me from that unrighteousness. And so if you would like to take this journey with me, then I would love for you to do it. If you want to come, if you want to come to the women's Bible study with me, but the things, some things in this house are going to change. I remember I used to let you do this and this and that and the other. And I know it's probably going to be a hard transition for you. I too am transitioning, but I have to raise a standard in the house. And I, and I hope that we can talk it through and whatnot and so forth. And you just got to talk. You got to talk. You just, just cause you got saved don't mean that they want to be saved. They have to, when they're older, they have to, um, develop their own conviction from the Lord. That's when you start fasting and praying and ask God to arrest their heart and their mind, just like he arrested you. So show me some hearts. If you enjoyed this lesson today, Deuteronomy six, four through nine, the Shema, the Shema. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Love the hearts. Love the hearts. So <clears throat> tonight, my husband and I are teaching on um, Psalm 127. And um, it's about, we're teaching about what parenting means from the Hebraic perspective. Remember, when we walk in the things of God, it is not a noun. It's not an idea. It's not abstract. It's a verb. It's concrete. It's what we do. It's how we live. And um, I enjoy, I enjoy you. I enjoy talking to you um, and I enjoy your encouragement. So Lord, I thank you and I praise you that we now understand the Shema. I pray that we will, as women collectively, teach this Shema to others, especially to our children. Remind us to talk to our children all the time, every day about the Lord, but not in a way that pushes them away, not in a pharisaical, sadducetical, Herodian type way but in a way that whets their appetite and gives them a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Teach us, Lord God, how to spoon feed our children the word of God that they're hungry and not give it to them where they turn their ear because we become religious in our training. I thank you for women's ministry. I thank you for Titus 2 ministry. I thank you for the Shipra and the Pua ministry. I thank you for the Ezra Konegdo ministry. And I thank you that we are making our Mikdash Miat a holy place where the Ruach HaKadosh can reside. I thank you that our children will rise up and call us blessed. I thank you, Lord God, that we will do our husbands good and not evil all the days of our life. I thank you, Lord God, that though we may be weary doing this thing, God, um, depending on what's going on in our lives, we may be weary, but I pray that we will serve you with all of our might, the highest degree of diligence, strengthen our feeble hands, God, teach our fingers to fight and our hands to war. Bless us, Lord God. When we're sleeping, give us strategies to build our home because wise women build their homes. <clears throat> God, I pray that every woman who listens to this periscope will develop um, a, a, a company of women that will encourage her to continue to build her house. And for that, God, I give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, ladies, remember that Titus 2 matters. I love you and bye-bye.